all right what is going on everyone welcome back to the channel connor on shane so today i want to bring up a couple of things in the market because again sentiment is still really bad not looking too good i want to bring up a couple of things like i said you know i'm personally still very bullish on everything going on but we're going to bring up a few things because Again, I'm looking into the sentiment in previous cycles, you know, at similar time frames from what I believe we're at now, and I'll get into that in a minute here, but so we got some very big news, which is very good here, right here. Ethereum survives the SEC. Today we're happy to announce a major win for ETH developers, technology providers, and industry participants. The enforcement division of the SEC has notified us that it is closing its investigation into ETH 2.0. This means that the SEC will not bring charges alleging that sales of ETH are securities. So that's very that's very bullish for ETH, I'm not gonna lie. That is mod coded. But you know, with again, I was gonna pull up the chart too with ETH. You know, I I think, um, yeah, because honestly, I think the ETH chart still just looks super primed to, you know, eventually like continue and start bouncing. You know, again, this market is so speculative, guys. It's up and down, especially if you're on Twitter every day like I am, just gauging the sentiment. It is, it is so toxic. Sometimes it seems like all you see is bear posts, doom posts, you know, Bitcoin going to 10K, 15K, 20K from here, right? Um, you know, and then other days, you know, everyone's making 200X as opposed to screenshots, you know, buying their favorite supercars, you know. It's, it's nuts. Anyways, with ETH though, I do still think the chart looks great. You know, it's it's hard to know obviously where everything's gonna go but like I was saying before about the sentiment that's kind of what I wanted to get in into because again that's very bullish for ETH just for again like like the thing was saying here talking about developers technology providers industry participants basically anyone that invests in crypto uses Ethereum anyone building on Ethereum that's very bullish so that's a big win win for ETH. You know, I feel like this whole bull market it really is lining up to eventually just have a huge blow off top at some point over the next few months. You know, well into probably the end of this year, maybe early into 2025. But outside of that, it's you know it's definitely gonna be interesting to say the least about this entire bull run. So. So on Twitter, I was searching altcoins are dead, you know, and this is the time span in 2020 from about June to September 2020. And the reason why I'm doing that is I was looking in into the sentiment from June, which is right around here. So this is the previous bull market right here, you know. And I, I searched this around June upwards of September. So oh my God, what am I doing? I have the Bitcoin chart here. It's because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people might claim that technically if you look into last cycle, you know, where we are technically right now is this area, you know, from like a chart looking perspective, you know, it does look exactly like it, right? You know, we're literally at previous all-time highs. We're bouncing around just like this. And then what do we see after that? A huge rip to the upside, right? But with this, it's kind of the same thing. And at this point, you know, people were just waiting for that exact same price movement to happen, right? You know, I feel like a lot of people are waiting just for this. This up only giga rip, right? Something like this. Which, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen over the next few weeks into a you know month it could absolutely happen right um but the reason why i searched in the sentiment down here is because 
I'm looking at it kind of from a time frame perspective in the sense of what this chart is showing here. So this is the, the last couple months and I'll show you guys the sentiment in a, cent, in a second but so this was the cycle from 2014 into 2017 into the 2018 bull run right so the Bitcoin halving was right around here somewhere in early July you know and from the halving in July when it hit its all-time highs and basically prepared itself for the next upward move look at how long this was it was eight months after the halving before any sort of heavy price action finally started moving for Bitcoin right so that was the 2016 into 2017 2018 cycle um, this one I, I kind of look at it a little differently because again the market cap of crypto itself was tiny for that in comparison to what it is now um, but again that's still like valid data right just looking at B Bitcoin's history and so same thing with this one this was the 2020 into 2021 bull run right so we have in May of 2020 and then when did we finally hit and break through all-time highs and finally start that price discovery move this was around seven months around 220 days something like that 220 230 days back here is about you know 260 to 280 days you know give or take an extra few weeks maybe a month but then if you look at this cycle it's different in a sense where that same seven month time frame we're not even halfway to that yet may or maybe halfway because uh, so we had the having what it's june may i'm pretty sure it was in mid-april right so that was so literally i think less maybe two months ago just about two months ago right around there is when we had the Bitcoin having so if we're looking at this bull run from when we're really going to see a price movement similar to the previous cycles again even though this is a lot earlier we've had price move but if we're going to gauge it how after all-time highs when major price discovery happened and it was around seven to eight months say seven and a half months right if it's going to pull an exact similar time frame to previous cycles this would make it start to move and get heavy into price discovery all the way in November of this year you know and I'm not saying that that would be the f the actual beginning of this price discovery move because I do think at some point earlier this year we're probably gonna see price you know bounce into new highs bounced around but I do think from you know even around here current levels in June I think into July I think June and July we probably do range a little bit but I'd say after July from August on I'm, I'm probably I'm gonna be even more bullish and perma bull on the market than I am right now you know because I still feel like it's it is still early time frame wise if you compare it to previous cycles you know there's a lot of things lining up for bullish you know news from everything <clears throat> but again at the same time you know like I was talking about earlier altcoins are very dead right now you know most utility coins especially lower caps to micro caps are back in the trenches of you know late 2023 when literally things were bottomed out so many coins are all the way back down right but so the sentiment though if we're looking based on the time frame you know so this is um you know a couple of things there's one or two posts i wanted to show i think there's one here oh no it didn't save but it, i mean it's interesting to see so in july of 2020 like it seems like all coins were you know really dumping heavily right and it's kind of interesting uh where was i'm trying to find that one post 
because it seems like a lot of alts at the time still weren't really you know moving heavy into price discovery it was almost like right before everything was about to explode you know at least a few weeks to a few months before things were going to you know really take off right um but you know outside of that there's uh, there were some posts in there i'm trying to find a couple but i'd have to just mess around with like like the search things that i've looked up let's look up alts altcoins dead let's see what happens because again, the, like the the range that I'm searching here is from time frame right around here. So from like June, which again, this is why I'm searching it though. Again, because this is time frame wise right around where we are. Again, even though our price action is up here technically, if we were to look at it, you know, we we've already had this move up and we're just sitting at all time highs now. But time frame wise, their having was in May in the last bull run. And but you know, a month to two months out would be in between June and September, right? That would be when the sentiment you know, that's what I've been trying to gauge, right? About two months out from the having. And it, again, it seems like some altcoins were, you know, not really doing too much. Altcoins were kinda down, some of them were. Yeah, there's a, uh, I don't know. I think, oh, I think it was this one. No, not necessarily. But anyways, you guys can look this up too. You know, if you're curious to look up like t uh, based on time frame, you want to just hit, go on any search on Twitter, you can hit advanced search and you can add all these different terms things you can include, exclude, whatever you want to do, and just go all the way to the bottom, search for dates, and so just type in whatever you want, you know, and then put this in, whatever, like, time frame you want to search for. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You can do a lot with Twitter. I feel like a lot of people don't know. But, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to bring up, because I think, you know, from what I got, it seems like back at the same time frame in the previous run, it did seem like alts were in a, not full out similar position, but, you know, right before everything really started to move, it seemed like the sentiment was very off back then as well. You know, I feel like a lot of people were feeling very similar, how a lot of alts, you know, they were up, some were down, and obviously there were still a lot of altcoins that were still at pretty good entry levels, slash, you know, just on good dips, you know, down here, obviously before everything took off, you know, but outside of that, I think, I just still think it's, it's a good time to be alive, guys, good time to be in the market, and like I said, I'm just, I'm going permeable, like really, I think once we get through July, through August, especially if we're still ranging, haven't seen any major dumps or anything else, which I mean, I think the the if Bitcoin does go way lower, you know, altcoins, I don't even know how much lower they can go, to be honest. Like, they are already crushed like crazy, but I think we're still just gearing up for, you know, at least one more major run over the next few months into the next year. But it's, it's just a patience game, you know. It's like I was saying with the previous cycle, you know, time frame wise, Technically, we still have a few months if it were to line up with previous cycles, you know, from the having, right? But obviously, we were way early in this cycle. But the fact Bitcoin's been holding up so well and hasn't just, you know, giga nuked, because I still think if we saw Bitcoin even dump, which again, I'm not saying it's going to do this by any means, nor do I really think it's going to pull this. But worst case, if it did, it came down, bounced and bounced and bounced. Dipped all the way even to like 40, 50,000, which it wouldn't. I mean, this is on October. I'm drawing it kind of early, but if it did dip that low, that would still be very, very bullish. I think that would make the chart even more primed for Bitcoin to eventually, 
you know, make that final leg up that we're all waiting for in the bull run, right? It's like worst case it does do something like that, maybe in August, and then bounces, boom, boom. Upwards of when the election hits, then we're back up. You know, something like that. So I don't know. But again, I'm just a dude talking on the internet. You know, don't just take this with a grain of salt. Like, this is just my opinion and my thoughts. And I, I genuinely mean that. Most of these videos are just a lot of my thoughts just talking about the market, guys. You know, I never like to be someone just full out calling coins left and right. Um, you know, just on YouTube for some of the stuff, a lot of it's just genuine, you know, looking into stuff and just me telling you about stuff I'm bullish on, bearish on, you know, and how I'm just gauging the market. But, you know, like I've said before, I'm just holding through all this. I really don't, I'm not very affected if at all, sometimes I get really affected, but you know, this is part of the game. It's part of crypto. We are in a full blown bull run. Doesn't feel like it, but at the same time, we 100% are, and we it is still early time frame wise for the cycle to play out, which is why I'm super bullish over the next six to 12 months still, no matter what price does, because again, we still just had the having two months ago, and as you guys saw, you know, if you took all this stuff off from when the Bitcoin having happened. What happened over the next span of close to two years after the halving? Up, it was up only, right? Same thing here. From the halving, about a year to two years, 500 days after the halving, things were already starting to move up only. You know, we're, how many days out are we right now from, from the halving? March, April. We're 70 days. If, again, if we're basing it off time frame, let's say five, what was it, 500, I don't know if it's 580 or if it's 515, let's do 540, something similar. That would put us well into late October. Again, se se like something like that, similar time frame. I personally do not know if this bull run is going to last that long all the way into October next year. You know, I really don't know how long it's going to last, guys. I'm not I'm not here to predict that, you know, the Bitcoin top is going to just you know, run well into June, July, October next year. Excuse me. Cuz honestly, I just had a feeling that this this bull run is probably going to top out between November, December, January, February of this year. You know, but I think, you know, when that really comes, when the election happens and, you know, just over time, like we're going to see what happens in the market, right? Because, you know, this could just be a really kind of extended bowl, you know, as time goes on. Because, again, if we look back at what I just did, you know, for the bull run to really be in a bull run before it was decided that the bear market was happening. Like, like I said, it was like, what, a year and a half to two years? Which at least that's what worked for both cycles, right? So that is why time frame wise, I still believe we have a long way to go. And that's why I still think there's, you know, again, the market's very wishy-washy right now. But, you know, I still think the asymmetric bet is to be in the market rather than out of it right now. Because personally, you know, I like all the coins that I'm holding. I have strong conviction in the coins that I and I like that I bring up that I like to talk about that I personally hold, right? You know, and you guys can literally borrow my conviction in some of the coins. You know, a lot of you will look at the chart and be like, "Why would I buy that?" You know, it's bottomed out or it's it looks dead or this and that, but you know, I just I have conviction in certain coins specific stuff for specific reasons you know it's like ixs i love ixs as an rwa coin soil you know revest is pretty strong landax as well obviously mog i talk about it every day render tau as you know very in my opinion not safe because nothing in crypto is safe right but big bet ai coins 
you know, NKI, SPAC, FLT, Link. You know, Virtual I was interested in, but that one dropped very significantly recently. FX1 I do like too, you know, I, I could keep going. Warped Games for gaming, still my highest conviction just long term. You know, but I just see a lot of Doom posting like the bear market's over. You know, on my feed and stuff and... You know, again, how, how could you call it over when, again, we're maybe two months from the halving? That's like saying in any of these previous cycles, that's the exact same thing as saying, look at this. Oh, Bitcoin just halved, but two months later, it didn't do anything. May. Look at this, like in July. This is where we are time frame wise, if we're looking in the previous cycle. And then saying, yeah, you know what, crypto's dead, it's not going anywhere. Two months from the halving, guys. Like, think about how early this looks, just based on the time frame of how long the bull run actually lasted. From the halving. You know, and again, from this point, how long did that take? Another three months for this to actually start getting traction. It took four months five months just for it to get back up to all-time highs and then for it to hit somewhere around the top which we'll say let's say from march into about may if you got i think if you got anywhere in this area you know you're you're low-key a genius to be selling out you know and that's actually oh no that's not where i sold out hold on but 290 days close to what 10 months maybe yeah, let's say nine to ten months. So nine to ten months from this point, time frame is where we are. That's how long it took for Bitcoin to finally break all time highs, go heavy into price discovery, you know, and just get into a general toppy area. So technically, if you look at it from us, time frame wise, again, I'm not going off technicals because again, we're already at all time highs, right? You know, maybe we we dump for a little bit and then go up, but time frame wise. That would mean that we still have nine months from current day for us to see Bitcoin reach all time highs, which that would be, so I think it was about 290 days. That would put us when? Look at that, literally almost April 2025. So from now until March, like February, March, April 2025. This is going to be when the blow off top happens, if it happens. That is why I am hyper bullish on the market right now, you know, because unless the, <clears throat> excuse me, unless Bitcoin decides to do something completely different than it's ever done in its history, something that it's never done in its long term, you know, decade long history, right? Then, you know, the entire crypto market's wrong. So I'm personally still taking this bet long term, whatever the hell happens in the market, you know, to see this play out again, if we're going to play it from here, you know, it could do anything like this into the nineties has a huge dip, you know, and then tries to top out again and maybe it pulls another move and then boom, maybe, maybe it does something like that. Maybe it giga nukes because of all the boomers that have been investing they finally just sell off their Bitcoin, everything. Everyone dumps their shares, something. Mid-2025, you know, something. I have no idea. It's. I think it's just fun to speculate on it, but... Again, just... that. This is kind of what I'm waiting for, just... The next, you know, 6 to 12 months. That's why I always say that. So, that's what I got for everyone here. You know, I hope you guys found some value in some of the stuff I'm bringing up. And you guys can do a lot of this research, just look into this stuff yourself, you know, if you'd like. But, you know, that's why I like to cover this, because to me, a lot of that stuff's kind of interesting, kind of checking the sentiment of, you know, similar time frames, or time frames, rather, of previous cycles. So, again, that's what I wanted to bring up. And from here, I'm going to drop a lot more stuff on... <clears throat> probably more specific tokens and coins over the next few days to few weeks. Um, so outside of that, 
stay up to date with that, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you.